This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. OPEC oil output fell last month, a Reuters survey found on Monday, reflecting lower exports from Iraq and Nigeria against a backdrop of ongoing voluntary supply cuts by some members agreed with the wider OPEC Plus alliance. The OPEC pumped 26.42 million barrels per day, BPD, last month, down 50,000 barrels of oil per day from February. The survey, based on shipping data and information from industry sources, found several members of OPEC+, Plus, which includes OPEC, Russia and other allies, made new cuts in January to counter economic weakness and increased supply outside the group. Producers agreed last month to keep them in place until the end of June. Gasoline prices for U.S. motorists could jump by as much as 15 cents a gallon, with global fuel supplies tighter after Ukraine's recent attacks on Russian refineries. Patrick DeHaan, petroleum analyst at GasBuddy.com said on Monday. Rising gasoline prices could hinder the U.S. government's fight against inflation. Higher pump prices already contributed to a solid jump in consumer and producer prices in February. Motor fuel prices tend to rise seasonally this time of year as vacationers take to the roads and the U.S. switches to more expensive summer-grade gasoline. This year, Russian refinery outages could boost U.S. pump prices by an additional 5 to 15 cents a gallon from GasBuddy's previous April forecast of between $3.36 and $3.67 per gallon, DeHaan said. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Tucked away on a side road in suburban Beijing, the Xiaowuji battery charging station opened by Sinopec in December 2023 offers a glimpse of China's post-gasoline future. Boasting 70 fast electric vehicle charging points, coffee machines and massage chairs, the station is one of thousands being built by the state-run oil giant across the country as it looks to adapt to battery-dominated driving. EV sales in the world's largest auto market are expected to account for 40% of the 23 million cars sold this year. China's gasoline demand is predicted to peak by 2025 and could halve by 2045 making a strategic shift an imperative for its biggest oil refiners and marketers, Sinopec and PetroChina. U.S. exports of liquefied natural gas, LNG, fell slightly in March to 7.61 million metric tons, MT, from 7.73 MT in February as production of the superchilled gas from the country's second-largest exporter remained constrained. Preliminary data from financial firm LSEG showed on Monday. But the U.S. was the largest exporter of LNG last year with exports rising 12% over 2022 to average 11.9 billion cubic feet per day. Nearly half of matches in last year's LNG exports were sent to Europe, which cut imports of Russian pipeline gas following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Freeport LNG last month disclosed it had completed repairs on an electric motor at one of the plant's three large processing trains after more than a month of reduced operations. But it added two other processing units would be taken out of service until May, likely leading to another month of overall weaker exports. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Copper prices ticked higher on Tuesday, lifted by concerns of tighter raw material supply and a production cut by Chinese smelters while upbeat demand outlook following positive domestic manufacturing data also lent some support. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange was up 1.7% at $9,017.50 per metric ton by 0812 GMT. The exchange resumed trading after a long weekend and the Easter Monday holiday. The most traded May copper contract on the Shanghai Futures Exchange closed daytime trade 0.6% higher at 73,230 yuan, $10,121.07, per ton, not far from an all-time high of 73,530 yuan hit on March 22. The Shanghai Futures Exchange, SHFE, will explore and promote a nickel futures internationalization plan according to a report by the China Non-Ferrous Metals Industry Association, CNIA, on Tuesday. 
the exchange will make efforts to seize opportunity as the global nickel pricing system undergoes a restructuring, Zhang Ming, deputy general manager of the SHFE, told a meeting hosted by the CNIA. Reuters reported in September that the exchange was looking into the possible launch of nickel futures for international use, a potential challenge to the London Metal Exchange's contract. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. The U.S. Department of Agriculture in its first weekly crop progress report of the 2024 growing season rated 56% of the U.S. winter wheat crop in good to excellent condition, below an average of trade expectations but still the highest for this time of year since 2019. While the winter wheat harvest remains months away, the improved crop prospects underscore how global grain supplies are shifting to surplus from the shortages of the past several years caused by unfavorable weather, the coronavirus pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war. A year ago, just 28% of the U.S. crop was rated good to excellent in the 13th week of the calendar year as drought gripped the Southern Plains breadbasket. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.